All right, good morning, Anna, and this was a great video to uh, wake up to, to start to work on. Uh, we are on day five of our training program on the online mentorship, and uh, we're working into pretty contaminated urban environments in very difficult conditions. You've got tons and tons yep. of heavy wind, um, and that really will wreak havoc with any track. Uh, and I'm really amazed at how well Yaga does on this trail in general. I'm going to try to critique this as best I can. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult with the wind, uh, but for the most part, very easy to read dog. She's working quite well. So one of the first things I want to remark upon is your wonderful lead handling. You've got 10 meter lead, so roughly 30 feet, and you're using just enough in a busy area that it's going to be relatively safe for the dog uh, and not risk your dog or you for that matter. Um, and that's the beauty of having a longer lead. You can make a long lead short, but you can't make a short lead long. And having that long lead all the way out in certain areas really can be advantageous. And we're going to see that a little later. So lead handling is exceptional. Really good work. Now, this is one of those videos uh, where I actually get to critique something a little bit later. Seems like everything in the past was always so perfect. So one of the things that's happening right now with Yaga is you're air scenting a distraction. And you can tell by the behavior. All of a sudden, head popping to the left, you got a big increase in speed, uh, and he's going to deviate, or she's going to deviate off the track pretty strong right now. Okay, another big air scent, and she's trying to isolate the track as it relates to that air scent, but it's just not there. So this is one of the things that can happen with young pups when we're building them up into an urban trailing tracking environment, is the puppies will have a tendency to want to jump to just about any fresh human air scent they get. And it's, and actually even older dogs are gonna do that. It's very, very common. So you did a great thing when you told her to leave it and get back to work right here. Um, she wants to go say hello, and more importantly, she'd love to uh, cheat you into a reward early if, if at all possible. So when we get these distractions, it's very important that we shut them down very quickly because we're in a training environment. We know who our subject is. So when our dog uh, defaults to an air scent to the wrong thing, Immediately, we want to correct them. So right here, Yaga smells the track on the other side of the bushes and picks it up really nicely right here. Beautiful work. Again, good distance on the lead. The way we always want to kind of measure that is the distance between you and the dog should be the distance between you and the street. That way you can pull your dog back very, very quickly if a car comes into a, a difficult situation. And uh, you're managing your vehicles and managing your dog all without help. Uh, exceptional line handling really really good work this is one of my favorite parts obviously you had odor go in there with the wind but the track is off to the outside and she hits it really really hard and uh, gets you right back on track and this is going to happen in windy conditions like this the scent will not stay exactly in one's place especially when we're dealing with a lot of hard surface um, when you have winds especially of this extreme you can expect your scent trail to be, be blown sometimes hundreds of yards away uh, and so for the dog to actually track and trail in this situation is, is, a, is a good thing. And Yaga is doing great. This is a difficult, hardcore track for a young dog. Uh, very few dogs would have this ability at, at this age. So good work. Now this is one of those examples. You get into a good open area with no traffic so you can let all that lead go. That's important because you're in an area where you have a lot of negatives. Now you notice the difference in uh, behavior here. Head up, head looking all around, um, no consistent direction of travel, but heavy duty speed. This is a dog that's worried about losing the track because she's starting to get out of odor. So this is a big difference between an air scent detection of a human body and uh, you know, loss of odor. That's the speed can kind of be the same, but the body language is going to be different. Um, and the big change in the body language is going to be inconsistent direction of travel uh, and um, a lot of head waving. So you did a good thing in working out of that negative and trying to get her back on track. And it's very clear that she picks it up again right here. Again, exceptional use of the long lead, letting your dog all the way out there so uh, she can look for the odor. Um, I love you dealing with the obstacle here, even though you get a little bit stuck. Uh, for the most part, you're really doing a great job. Um, now, it's clear that Yaga is starting to detect something from a distance over here. She's not exactly sure where it is, um, 
but she's in odor. And this is the problem with a windy day uh, on a relatively hard surface track. Um, you're going to get a very, very wide scent trail, and sometimes there's not a clear direction to travel to that scent trail. It doesn't seem until she gets closer to this other hedge line that she actually picks up the track well. Okay, so this behavior right here is again loss of trail odor, and notice how we've got that inconsistent direction of travel, head up, heavy duty speed. This is uh, telling you a dog that does not have the trail. I know it's easy to get a little bit impatient oh, here, but just try to relax. She's doing a good job trying to locate odor. This is a very difficult condition. Uh, so there wasn't really any need to talk to her at that moment or to motivate her. She's plenty motivated and doing a really, really good job. But Yaga is going to get your track line here. Right now you're on the fringe of it. This is what we would call the trail. But watch when she picks up the track line. It's coming up right here. So that's your track line. Your fringe is off wide to the right. That's primarily due to a lot of wind. Okay, so right here we get some distraction behavior. All of a sudden you get a hard head pop left, a big 90 degree turn, big change of behavior, and the signature radar wave of the head to the animal distraction in the bushes. You do a really good job of calling it and correcting her, but the reason why this is happening is because the incredible difficult conditions that you're in. Uh, super high wind, lots of hard surface, it's not an easy trail and you have a young dog. So when your track value begins to lower a little bit because you have less productive source and bad conditions, the dogs are going to default to distractions a little bit quicker and a little bit easier, especially the young ones. So the key is, just like that air scent to the wrong whoa, person, whoa, whoa, is catching whoa. it quickly and correcting it quickly. Just a quick verbal correction like you did is more than what you need to do. So now we're, we're getting a lot of loss of odor in general. There's really no ground track for her to nailed down, she's not getting any air scent at this moment. Um, you know, she's desperately hunting for it. You know, she's, she's in a little bit of odor right there, but we can't really say with certainty if that's the track or trail odor. And it could be just as easily, perhaps a distraction, somebody from here in the parking lot. Uh, I think if we would have had that good, consistent direction of travel and track, we would have seen a little bit better behavior. Uh, and just like before, when the trail value drops, the distraction value increases and you're going to be more inclined to get stuff like that. So good correction, fast correction, and you got her back to work nicely. Okay, so now it's clear that Yaga wants to go investigate these areas out in front of her. You're not letting her go and your footwork is guiding your dog to the left, as is your lead hand guiding to the left. So now you're guiding the dog and this is something we never want to do because when you guide the dog, you're teaching the dog that um, you know where the track is and that your lead pressure is something that's very important for them to, them to follow. And I'm not convinced that she's on track right here when you let her go. I think she might be in general parking lot odor, but the subject or the person that you're looking for um, is not that obvious to me at this point. I think you're just moving in the right direction. Um, hindsight being 2020, uh, I think what I would have done is let her work that a little bit more, okay? Or if she just can't get it, sometimes we have to stop the track and just call it quits okay um, i know you're super super close to the ending um, but if your dog can't make that ending and it's just not going to happen in a training situation it's important that we just end the track and not continue it don't guide the dog into the ending because when we dog guide the dog into the ending we're teaching them to follow um, our pressure from the lead and then also our, our foot movement Okay, so let's talk about this track a little bit from the map's perspective. Um, in these conditions, this was a little bit too tough of a trail. I don't think the distance was a big deal, but I think uh, some of the heavy-duty traffic kind of was. Your lead handling was superb. That wasn't a problem. But I think I would have taken this away from the busy road because I think it's just a little bit too much contamination and a little bit too much going on. All that stimulation overload can cause the dog to get distracted a little bit easier, especially the young ones. So some of the distractions that we had 
may have not been so evident if the place was just a little less, less busy. Um, overall, absolutely fantastic. However, I think at the ending, rather than guiding her towards the direction you wanted her to go, I think I just would have let her work. And if she couldn't get it, you should have just canceled the track or called it at that point. It's okay to fail. She can fail. It's not a big deal. We actually learn more from our failures than we do from our successes. It's just important that we don't gift them a find. If it's a gift, it's never going to be something that they really learn from.